Hello, I'm Jerry Brain. I'm again here for the Generation Iron Fitness Network to answer questions submitted by viewers of the Generation Iron Network. So let's get right to the uh, next question. And again, I'm going to read it right off as just like I got it. Hello, Jerry. I've heard evidence that high levels of nitric oxide can possibly lead to damage of the Leydig cells of the testes. If this is true, would it be prudent for a trainer to limit the usage of no boosting foods or supplements before every workout, particularly if they train more than three times a week? Thanks. Actually, that's a very sensible question because nitric oxide definitely affects testosterone production and hormone production in general. Uh, as far as the studies go, isolated studies of rat Leydig cells, now this is in rats, do, does show that uh, when these cells are directly exposed to nitric oxide, the elatic cells, it does inhibit testosterone release. But you have to understand, this is a very, uh, it's a, what they call an in vitro experiment. It's a kind of isolated cell, in this case, rat elatic cells, that are exposed to unusually large amounts of nitric oxide. When that happens, things happen in the elatic cell where the testosterone is indeed not released. It's not really, doesn't duplicate what happens in the human body. Uh, you know, in fact, it, it, it's doubtful that levels of nitric oxide that high to, to cause something like that could ever happen in the human body. And I'll tell you why. Because nitric oxide, it's called, it used to be called endothelium dilation factor. And I'm sorry, endothelium relation, relaxation factor, because it relaxes the smooth muscles in blood vessels and it allows the vessels to dilate. This is why nitric oxide, when it's released from the lining of blood vessels, it causes greater blood flow, flow greater oxygen delivery to muscle, which increases a muscle pump and all that stuff. But the thing is, if nitric oxide gets too high, then you, know, you can actually, the blood pressure can get so low, you could slip into shock. And if that happens, you can actually die. There's a disease called septicemia, which used to be called blood poisoning. And it's highlighted by a huge drop in blood pressure. If the doctors can't control that drop in blood pressure, you die. So you never would want a massive amount of nitric oxide release. And the point here is that you'd have to have about that level of nitric oxide to inhibit testosterone directly in the testes. It's just not going to happen, right? Okay, the next thing here. Uh, Another way to look at it is that nitric oxide, by promoting oxygen and blood del uh, delivery to tissues, will, uh, in the normal amount of nitric oxide, I should say, will have an a, a opposite effect of promoting testosterone release in the, and this is what generally happens. Under normal circumstances, having an optimal release of nitric oxide promotes testosterone release by the Leydig cells, and again, it has to do with Increase blood delivery, increase oxygen delivery, which makes the cells far more efficient, right? Now, uh, the thing is, um, nitric oxide, again, in, uh, if you expose the cells to it directly uh, in large amounts, it would not be a good idea because nitric oxide is what they call a uh, it, it can turn into a free radical, and it can actually also damage the testes that way. But... In, in reality, nitric oxide is synthesized, synthesized and released so fast, it's actually a gas. It, it's so fast, it's like a ghost. It's released, it does a job, it disappears. My point is, it never lasts around, it doesn't, la it doesn't stay around long enough to, call, to inflict damage to the Leydig cells when it's produced locally in that area. So this is not something to be concerned about. Uh, now, if you're interested in boosting nitric oxide safely, my usual recommendations is to ingest six to eight grams of an amino acid called citrulline, maybe about an hour before the workout, or since citrulline can be kind of expensive, the, the, the far cheaper way to go is to ingest, simply to ingest six to eight ounces of beet juice two and a half hours before you work out. Now, it's important that you ingest that beet juice two and a half hours prior to the workout because the, uh, uh, the, the beet juice contains nitrates, which, uh, which have to be converted to nitrites, which are then further co uh, converted in the gut into nitric oxide. This takes a while. It usually takes about two to two and a half hours. So you want to give yourself about two and a half hours. 
Okay, uh, if you want further information about nitric oxide, anything related to nutrition, exercise, science, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, fat loss, all factual, all evidence-based, no ads, 40 to 50 pages every month, sub consider subscribing to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. There's nothing like it anywhere. I'm putting five decades of experience and study into this newsletter. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. Thank you for listening. Jerry, can excessive ejaculation adversely or positively affect your natural testosterone levels? From Jack Meoff. Okay, Jack, uh, to answer your question, short-term abstinence from uh, uh, ejaculations does slightly increase testosterone levels. However, long-term uh, abstinence can reduce...